going into Funk's Grove and I'm start, starting to see some uh, pawpaw trees. Nothing terribly obvious yet, but to the left of me, uh, amongst some walnut trees, I happen to see some. Funk's Grove is known for its maple syrup concern, and we're going to visit them today. But they also have pawpaws, so if you've been looking for them, this is the place. Slow down. Okay, they're actually right on old 66 here. Wait, that's not it. A little further. But there was a pawpaw tree just hanging out by that parking lot right there. There's the place. So we're here with Jeff Hake. Uh, he's showing us the maple syrup shop real quick. Wow. Yeah. So, so what's going on here? So this is the the main mass evaporator for all the maple sap. Okay. Uh, when the sap first comes in, um, it looks like water. Mm -hmm. Maple sap looks like almost nothing. Um, so we have to get it all cooked down, get out of the sugar. Uh, it goes through the RO machine first, the reverse osmosis machine. This is in the corner there. Um, okay. My father-in-law just got that this year after having a much smaller one, and he was thrilled. Okay. Because all electric, and it just takes way less energy to use, um, and it basically just does a lot of the extraction of the water. Okay, so, I see, I see. So instead of boiling it, it, it just pulls the moisture out. Yeah, so you're not using huge amounts of oil to do that. Makes um, sense. And it's, hopefully this farm set's going to be on um, solar soon. Yeah. Goal. Mm -hmm. So then now we're running on solar, which is a cool notion. Awesome. Um, and actually what's cool about that too is that the water that comes out of that is like just, it's just water. It's just pure oh, okay. water. There's no sugar in it. There's no minerals. It's just purest water. So then we can actually sell that water to like breweries and things. Okay. Um, we don't always successfully find a customer for that because we right. hold it. It's a huge amount. Sure. Um, but it's a pretty cool thing because our water around here is terrible. <laughs> oh, well, that's good to know then. Well, uh, so, but, well, I guess the trees naturally purify any of the water that comes through the ground. And so, but you're still left with syrup after the water is removed in the R. Right. Yeah. Uh, reverse osmosis thing. Right. So that RO can get the, the sap from, usually it's like 2 to 4% sugar when it comes out of the tree. And that'll get it up to about 7 or 8. Oh, okay. And Great. So then that's I see. a lot of the work taken off of the evaporator. But once it goes through that, then it goes over this. Little I see steel tugboat here mm -hmm. um and that just cooks and cooks and cooks and cooks and so if you come here in like late february early march there's mm -hmm. like maple steam right all around it's the coolest thing that is really neat and <laughs> does it have like a smell like mm -hmm. uh, okay wow yeah just like the area smells like mm -hmm. maple syrup um and in here it's just like a rich like it's like a maple sauna <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so what's with the barrels are these uh nice. maple syrup Right, so these are where we make our bourbon barrel aged syrup. Oh, uh, so whiskey acres up in DeKalb. Okay. Do you know whiskey? Acres? I know whiskey acres, yeah. sure. So they send us their barrels. Okay. We put syrup in them for three months. Mm hmm. Uh, and then we send, and then we extract it and bottle it, and we sell mm -hmm. it as a value added product. And then we send the barrels back to them, and they put whiskey back into it and make a maple flavored Uh huh. Um, so that's been a really cool partnership. It works really well on both. And it's really good flavor. I can, you can try some actually. Oh, I would, I would love to. Um, um, well, to... we can get there in a minute here, but uh, well, I don't hear. I'll, I guess I'll stop for now. I guess that kind of explains most of the process, or is there more? Okay, yeah. So everything has to go through a lot of filters because there are a lot of minerals. Okay. This is like several filtration. Right. Um, and then everything comes in here. Wow. I smell the pop up in here because I think the smell is lingering. Um, so it all gets piped into here. It goes into these finishing kettles. Wow. Um, and this gets to just the right percent of sugar that we want. Gotcha. At yeah. At that point, it's mm -hmm. like 66 and 67%. Okay. Um, Oops. And, then, <laughs> and then the last step uh, is that it goes over to this bottler. And this keeps the syrup at 180 degrees with the hot water jacket. Okay. And then uh, we bottle it hot. Ah. And it's heat pasteurized, basically. It's okay, I see. Safe. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much the whole... That's a basic process. Sure. I this end. There's all the stuff out in the woods. Okay. Um, I know the wood stuff a little better, actually. I know the general idea in here. Right, right, right. I don't, 
don't so, have the expertise to run this part of things yet. Okay, so do you most so is your kind of uh, part of the the whole process like uh, the collection end then? Yeah, I okay. Help, more often, I'm helping with um, just getting the lines all repaired, so it's all ah. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to do buckets, but actually last year, aside from a new um, walnut syrup product mm-hmm. that we're working yes, with, yes, I'm excited about that. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can try some of that too. I would love to. Um, but aside from that, last year was the first time we didn't do any maple on buckets at all. It's okay. All packing tubing. Okay, because I'd seen I'd seen the tubing running before because I've visited the area a number of times just looking around because the pawpaws are everywhere here. Yeah. And uh, I saw the the tubing set up out there pretty pretty crazy because it's like miles of tubing almost it's, right. Yeah. It's, all right. It's a huge grid, and as I've learned more, I've realized along with everyone else that like. Um, it's really the same amount of work as the buckets. It's just mm-hmm. like spread out. Mm-hmm. It's also more efficient. You right. can get more sap. You don't have to, like, buckets. The buckets can get old sometimes. You don't right. have to get out there and mm-hmm. have to dump them. Waste yes, sap. yes. All this comes right to you. Right. The extraction is more efficient. And um, it's, it's got a little bit of vacuum pull on it as well. The okay. problem is that with all the network out there, it takes so much maintenance. Trees right. Fall, mm-hmm. chew, right. All kind of dumb bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I can and imagine. Like, you know, like yeah, and then you have to come through, and it's like, oh god, we're so. Yeah, so you have to go like trace where the chipmunk nod in yeah. sector. You know, one of the weirdest, eight. <laughs> the weirdest sensations for me is like, you know, we'll get we'll go around and do as many of the visual repairs as need to be done, mm-hmm. and then we'll turn the system on, and we'll walk around again and listen for hissing sounds. Oh wow. Sounds. And it's like you have to find like where squirrels chew because any holes just lowers the pressure in the whole system. Right. And then we have to just like either accept that or fix it. Right. And or and like, you could be leaking product or something too. Then yes. right. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's a real thing. Um, so that's that's whole cool basic process. We use this for a lot of other stuff too. Sure. Our pancake mixes. And our right. Okay. Stuff. Okay. So we make all that stuff in here too. Interesting, interesting. Ice cream machine for maple ice cream. Oh, ho, ho, ho. well, what um, about Popeye ice cream then? Are you guys freezing stuff? Not yet. So this not is yet. Not, this is not technically ours. Ah. This is, um, it's another cousin of the family, but right now she's just focused on her maple ice cream. And I haven't, I was just actually just thinking like yesterday, I should really just ask her, may I rent? May I? Pretty machine? please, yes. Or, or like have her do it. Like she, it's a whole problem of regulations and things. Sure. Oh, I, I can, I can uh, imagine, yeah. Oh, but I'd love to have it just for personal reasons. Just to have oh, it sure. Ice cream. Oh, yeah. It, they're very tasty. And, uh, it just, I, it I seems like such a natural fit. Yeah. Well, uh, these are the pawpaws you have for sale mm-hmm. here. Yep, so they're just packed one-pound bags. Um, we sell them out of the shop for uh, $7 a pound. Okay. Um, which I think is kind of on the high end. I'm not really sure. They're, um, they're more... Other places. I think that's fair. I mean, they're wild trees, so mm-hmm. I think the going rate's about five, but I mean, around here, they're hard to come by. Right. And, you know, cultivars, people ask 10 or even like 20 a pound. But right? I mean, yeah, you I'm know, like, wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it'd be worth it to, to maybe have them. But I, again, like the demand, you really, like the Pawpaw Festival is where people go to get them. Right. But I don't think people know where to go get them otherwise. Right. We have and, people come from pretty far mm-hmm. away to come here. To okay. Yeah, I mean, some people are well-informed, but I think it's it's a mystery, you know, yeah. out there to a lot of folks. So that's good to know. And so you've got, like, you said about 20 pounds, or no, 12 pounds in there for, sale, here, for sale currently. The, the bulk amount over here, um, which I'm not even sure I have not been <laughs> I Okay, so I had two big orders to pack. Okay. Um, one for Green Top Grocery in Bloomington and okay. one for that kombucha company. Sure. And I went out and picked it out. I was like five pounds short and I was, mm-hmm. I was running out of time. I was mm-hmm. like, uh, okay, I'm going to go check my spot, but I think yeah. it's too early for you. And I just like ran out to the roadside back here. And there were so many. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it's all these little like... Oh, sure. You know, those really runty little ones. Yeah. You know, but I mean... guys. It was just like, this took like five minutes to pick. Right. Because they were just... All like, over the I was place. stepping on them. You yeah. Know? It was all that. And then bunch of others that i was trying to see how well they'll ripen off the tree which sure. some seem to actually be doing well this was this was hard and green when i picked it okay so i'm trying to see how much merit there is to that idea of ripening off the tree yeah so I, I, I can't as far as i've heard and as you know maybe if it's like right on the edge of hardness but you want that like kind of soft 
peach texture to be like they just want to like rip right off the peduncle oh, i think to right. to really be picking them and then even further ripening because it's like there's some that are not so hot oh what do we got here peeled <laughs> yes all right um i was experimenting with with processing again and i, I want to talk to you about sure yeah absolutely because i was already processing peaches mm -hmm. for our farm and with those, you just do like a two-minute hot bath. Oh, okay. And it loosens up the skin, they peel them really easily. Mm -hmm. It works okay with pop too. Interesting, okay. I've not heard anybody trying that, but uh, that, already had hot that makes sense. Yeah, right, like... yeah, why not? <laughs> um, the one thing that I have heard, though, that could be maybe problematic is that heat will, like, leach out the flavor of pawpaw. So, mm -hmm. I mean, for a quick blanch to just get the skin off, maybe it doesn't right. make a difference. But, you, I don't know, you'll have to kind of test and see on that one yeah. so that's that's an interesting thing because uh that that would pop the skin right off but then you still have the seeds to deal with it is, are right. you guys trying to do like pulping yeah yeah okay but yeah yeah <laughs> i'd like to because what i'd like to do i mean, first the thing i just say for the skin thing is that it wasn't as easy as peaches because the skin mm -hmm. is still so thin right they're still but at least it's looser mm -hmm. um loose enough that it was it saved some time sure so i'll take that because processing is really time consuming yes but the second part of getting just a mash just mm -hmm. just a puree without the seeds in it mm -hmm. i don't i know there's like you can use like those cone the those food cone, mill yeah yeah, yeah. Like the big wand mm -hmm. that you kind of stir around in there and right some people do that sometimes, but i don't I think it works okay, but you get a lot clinging to the seeds still that way and there's yeah. i have this thing called a squeezo which is yeah. like a like a a crank operated version of that now people i think popularly uh will modify the plastic auger in them okay. we have a version that has a metal auger so i'm gonna have to track down a plastic auger and then cut it down and then report back as to how <laughs> it works but my you're gonna hate to hear this but my method is just bust them in half take a grapefruit spoon and scrape the seeds pop them out and then just but yeah. you're you're gonna get carpal tunnel or something right. doing that. I know that's the thing. It's like and it's like because we're not selling them whole right now. As right. Much as I would like. I could. We do. We do value adding. We, mm -hmm. we have the opportunity to make a product. Right. Them, but I right. I don't know what it is yet. Right. And and then I have to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Now the thing is, like, I know uh, Bob Johnson at Nectar Flow Farms has a big device that's a pulper, and like apparently he can just feed it in with skins i guess he squeezes out the skins because they'll oxidize your pulp if they come in contact with it more so than if they are not okay. um and then uh but he'll just squeeze the pulp right into the machine and it, and it deals with the the seeds and i guess it's like a rubber spatula at running at a high speed that pushes it through a screen and then huh. it spits out any of the uh you know unwanted solids interesting but okay. it's like 7K or more, I think, for the machine. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? I know, this thing is like we do so much different fruit processing and extractions. It's like everything to have its own specialized piece right. of equipment. Right, right. Yeah, what like do you want to spend seven grand on first? Oh. <laughs> Highly specialized piece of equipment. <laughs> right. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so the area you're looking into is what we call Virginia. It's like one of the only really hilly areas around here. And okay. Once we get down a little further, you'll see... Then it gets, it's actually pretty steep. It's yeah. one of our best uh, sap timbers. Okay. Um, that's some of the lines that you can see yeah. running into the woods there. So um, are all these maple that you're tapping? Yes. Here? Yep. Okay. Um, although there are some of our walnut trees in this area too. Right. But you won't see any on them right now because right. they're just on buckets. Right. Okay. So yeah, the walnut is currently on buckets then. Uh, you too spread out to put right. on any systems. There might be a few spots where we can do some lines and then we uh -huh. have remote collection tanks that we'll that we go pick up right um but we're trying to figure that out for this year we tapped 162 trees i think last year holy moly and of the walnut and um we sold that made 87 half pints of walnut syrup last year and we sold out in about 24 hours whoa okay so the demand I, was uh high yeah. i made a sap beer from walnut sap that was Ooh. quite good I think it might have had uh, maple mixed into. I was just tapping trees, but my neighbor has a, a huge black walnut that's over my pawpaws, but they don't care. And I had heard that you can tap the, the walnuts, so I was curious. And they've got kind of a neat, it's like a buttery flavor almost yes. to the, the sap. 
Definitely. Oh, okay, so we can see some more lines running in here. Guys, we found some pawpaw <laughs> scat out here. Damn, I, look I, that. <laughs> yeah, that's the stuff. All right, that's the stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna try, or I get to try, Jeff just tried a little bit of walnut syrup. And it's all walnut, right? It's not walnut maple or anything. Right, we do have a mix, and actually the mix is also has its own unique merit to it, which is pretty interesting. Okay. Um, all right, here goes nothing. <laughs> Oh dang, that's oh Jesus. <laughs> myself here. That is really good. It just it it makes me think of just maple syrup, basically, but At there's first. something else. Yeah. But it's yeah. got that butteriness. Mm -hmm. I think it makes a difference that it's it's cold. Which yeah. when it's warm, you get a little more flavor out of it. Yeah. It's so bizarre because like smelling walnuts and all the you know, leaf material, yeah. you would think it would be disgusting. Right. <laughs> you know, like the hulls and everything. Yeah. Yeah, that really... But that's mighty fine. So these are mine, but you can see that they've been squirrel nibbled all damn year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, VP3 is one of my seedling trees. Okay. Um, and PC3 uh, also. And I think there might be a PC2 in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that guy. PC4. PC4. Not my strongest one, but it is loaded <laughs> this year. The strings are pretty bitter, but they're small, and I think they might ship okay. So that's uh, that's going to be going maybe the, the future of that one. We'll see. Okay. I'm going to do an experiment with those, and it's going to be another video. So Okay. Stay so tuned. It's like, a little <laughs> thicker skin. Is that what makes it better to ship? Or? I think just they're smaller. Just I think the better. fact that if they're they're bigger... There's more to mush, basically, mm -hmm. or, you know, roll around. And if you see the really big ones, like, I think one year there was almost two pounds, and they look like they're crushing under their own weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think these are a little more, or less susceptible to that see, for shipping, mushing. This is about the size of a duck egg, and duck eggs fit in extra large egg crates, egg mm -hmm. containers. So if you just put this in a, you know, like a half dozen thing for eggs. Okay. That would ship really well like that. I think you might be right. What I plan to do is put it in some sort of box, um, maybe packed in oats, because that is what James A. Little recommends in that book, and I'll send you the link on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, apparently, they store well in there, but I don't know. It's an old-timey way of doing it, and who mm. knows. But uh, I think that might be good packing material, too, and uh, I want to figure out a good box to fit inside of a priority mail flat rate envelope. So shipping is... A known quantity yeah and then the trick is going to be finding out the box and i don't know what that's going to be yet so let's let's look at some of the products you guys have here yeah. shall we yeah. so this is the one i missed filming earlier it's the <laughs> whiskey acres uh collaboration the bourbon barrel maple syrup it was delicious by the way and i'm gonna get a <laughs> bottle here so what, what else you got here are these ones you yeah. guys do too or is this uh, we don't different... make our own honey okay uh, but it's made right nearby here okay um, you can find saucies you know, big part of central Illinois. They're done in Chestnut, Illinois. Okay. Um, black currant preserves uh, made from central Illinois uh, black currants. We don't make that here either. Okay. Uh, but I actually used to have a job selling these. Okay. <laughs> um, this is the, like the last of our syrup. For the oh, year. wow. It's these tiny little <laughs> shots. We closed, we closed the shop. Right. Uh, I saw the sold out sign. So, right. okay. So, like, yeah, all we have left are these tiny bottles. Okay. Um, you just tried the walnut syrup. Yeah, it was delicious. Um, when will is, you guys have, I guess... So when will it be in stores? Should be or um, in this store. <laughs> in this store, <laughs> right? So I was saying before that last year. So this is from the 2021 batch, actually. Okay. We made like I think 12 half pints that year, and it was mm -hmm. just for a trial. Right. Last year we made 87 half pints, and they sold out in a little over 24 hours. Wow. Okay. It was wild. I mean, sold over reserve. Mm -hmm. um, this year we're hoping to double that again, um, and we should have that around the same time that we have maple syrup, if not like a little after. So okay. like first second week of March. Okay, perfect. I don't remember what date we had it last year, but I didn't expect it to be that important. That okay. it was like, this is the day we have it, next day we don't anymore. <laughs> um, so, but we'll, I'm hoping we'll have twice as much next year. Okay, cool. Um, in this, in this size. It's exciting. That's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Pancake mix, which has our maple sugar in it. Um, two different kinds of pancake mixes. This one has cornmeal in it on top of the whole wheat. Uh, Johnny cake mix, which is just cornmeal. Maple bran muffin mix. Um, 
yellow popcorn, which has our maple ramp seasoning in it in the oh, back. Crazy. Um, maple ramp seasoning is really good on popcorn, but it's I'm also good intrigued. on like, every kind of meat. Okay. It's good on vegetables. It's good on. It, I I love bragging on it because it's the product that I put together myself. Right on. It's I'm intrigued because, yeah, it, it, so it's dried ramps? Yes. So, okay. You know, we do have a ton of ramps mm -hmm. in the grove, and we could probably dig them, but there's two reasons I don't dig them. Well. Wow. One is for the obvious conservation concerns. Mm -hmm. The other is just that it's a big pain in the ass. I don't need to. Right. <laughs> so well, I if you can. why people get so obsessed about it. If you can harvest just the tops and use them, then what the heck? Yeah. So it basically it turns into like a bright green, a super pungent powder. Okay. Um, it's super light. So by weight, it's almost nothing in that seasoning. Hmm. But by volume, it's a good portion of it. So it's the seasoning is just the dehydrated powdered ramps, maple sugar, black pepper, and salt. Okay. Um, perfect popcorn seasoning. Awesome. Um, yeah. I think that covers most all of All right, we cool. Our local pottery, here. all kinds of other stuff. Neat. I'll shoot the board here just to yeah. give folks at home the idea of pricing, mm -hmm. which I imagine will be more or less the same next year. Yeah, okay. it should be, unless something drastic happens. Yeah, right. Um, well, okay. So come here, get your pawpaws, get your <laughs> pancake mix, get your popcorn. If you're lucky, get some syrup. Not this <laughs> maybe next year. <laughs> we will, unless something absolutely terrible happens, we will have syrup again starting next March. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us all this fun stuff. Yeah. The Fruit Wowzers. <laughs> not available in Pawpaw. <laughs> not available in Pawpaw. I tried. Yeah. I failed. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> so you're still alive, but... <laughs> that's a bad... Live to tell the tale, oh, but... Quick thing. That's what I sure. managed to say before. It was so rare that my wife was out of town. Yeah. I made those. I'm so glad that she was. Oh, boy. You would have had a fun so, weekend. She would have been so mad. <laughs> oh, man. Like, so I, yeah. what all do we have here, though? We got pear um, cobbler. Pear cobbler, which is um, our own pears or pears from our neighbor. Nice. Um, maple syrup, cinnamon, and salt. Ooh. Um, 3-1 has the pear, the apple pie, which is a similar you know, flavor to the pear. Uh, black currant jam, which is mm. just our own black currants and syrup. Peach nectar, maybe my favorite. Um, our own peaches. Okay. And maple syrup. Okay, um, so these all have, they're sweetened with maple syrup and then dried. That's beautiful. Yep. Oh, and uh, our own grapes and maple Oh, syrup. wow. Okay. There you have it. Yeah. So here we are in Funks Grove Cemetery. And it has some historical documents about uh, Funks Grove. So it sounds like a lot of the settlers here were from Ohio. And it makes me wonder if that's why pawpaws are in abundance here, or conversely, why folks from Ohio found this place to be so homey.